Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 16. Thoughts? This episode is called Afterlife. So, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAC After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So, yeah, um, great opening scene with... Uh, yeah, this the the car sale the used car salesman. He's like certain that he's got this down. You know, I I don't know if he's foolish enough to think that Coulson is an easy mark, but he believes that he can. Uh, Honest Eddie, Honest Eddie, is confident that he can convince Coulson to to buy. You know, and. Yeah, the, you know, uh, the kids are monsters. I mean, Eddie, don't get him started, because it's so much worse than you think, you know. And he's like, I mean, they're, they're adults. I thought that, you know, I, I thought that they were mature enough, but no, they are being monsters, you know, trying to... To tear down the the organization from Colson's point of view, you know, using superpowers against Shield agents, you know, it's a mess. So that's yeah, and and you know, and Eddie's like, you know what, you you need an SUV. Oh, it actually kind of looks like that one. That is the SUV, <laughs> and just. Yeah, and and closing the the scene on Coulson icing him, icing Eddie with the words, "The tiger's been out for a while now." And we go to the to to Sky recovering, and you know I I quite appreciate this thing of like they look like. Those needles, I forget what the what that practice is called, but I think you know what I what I mean. You know these these you know needles inserted into pressure points, but there's also this technology thing going on with them. So yeah, and of course they found another way to get Chloe Bennett, you know, partially undressed. Which I appreciate. She does actually call out. The the character does, at least. And <laughs> Lincoln introduces, you know, he, yeah, he, he comes in and he's bringing up this microwave popcorn. That really is a terrible analogy. Like, that's impressively bad. I appreciate that Bobby is still standing up for Sky. And let's see. Yeah, and the Yeah, they managed to work in a title drop explaining that they call this place the afterlife. And we do get some great lore. It it really is a very compelling way to, to you know, ag again, very much getting X-Men vibes, you know, you're, you're safe here, and we're gonna teach you how to use your power, and, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's very, and, and the thing of, you know, the X-Men, sometimes the metaphor is for disadvantaged, you know, groups, minorities, sometimes it's about, like, being a teenager, puberty, you know, it's irreversible, but you'll learn to control all the power you feel surging in you right now, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I felt like they did, you know, and, and everyone is staring at, you know, she's, she's the special girl and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the guy who's being really helpful in explaining everything is attractive and just, yeah, it's very YA. And I'm here for it. <laughs> right. And May describes what's going on as a witch hunt. Which, yeah, yeah, this was before Trump completely destroyed that word. 
by, you know, applying it to people trying to prosecute him for the many, many crimes that he's been committing for decades. And I gotta say, I don't always love the character of Lance. This episode, he really cracked me up. Him and Coulson together, a lot of, a lot of fun things with, you know, and the, this thing of, we think that the, the thing that he means, you know, he's, he says the, 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 um, you know, the, the, the thing, you know, do you always travel with, uh, you know, whiskey? Well, you know, sometimes you need something to keep you warm at night. Two glasses, that's with the person who's keeping me warm at night. You know, that was... And, and then he does the no homo. In your, in your case, I'll make an exception. Let's see. You know, he is very much... He's, he's one of those characters that, like... We straight cis men are supposed to want to be him you know, straight cis women are supposed to want to be in in the, the position of Bobby, I guess. And yeah, Bobby and Gemma talk and uh, you know, I gotta say when when she said I I or I forget exactly who said it, but someone said, you know, there's probably like a self-destruct kind of thing, you know. If you mess with it, if you mess with Fury's toolbox the wrong way, that means it's going to, like, did you know? Yeah, get destroyed and take all the secrets with it. I thought that Gemma was going to intentionally trigger that, but at the end of the episode, we see that she, you know, sneaked, snuck, snuck is a word. You know, into yeah, she's not get with Leo out of there, and yeah, um, Sky is told the the gloves that Gemma made slowed down the transition. It actually, meant that it took longer for her to recover once she got to the afterlife. I do like the pizza night crack. You know, I don't know if Lincoln has a nickname in the afterlife, but I think it should be I Thought You Knew. I think he says it at least twice. Does he say it three times? He says it a lot in this episode, which I think I think it's on purpose. I think they're they're doing a thing of like, you know, there's a lot that she learns that she didn't know. Yeah. And, right, I like that, you know, the, yeah, Coulson called the cold shield on them, triggered the alarm, and he's like, don't, don't worry, we'll be fine, we just have to hold out here, you know, it's built to sustain a Hulk, we just have to hold out here until backup gets here. I just hope they didn't bring a, it's just, yeah, classic you know, just to see, see, Coulson, if you only hadn't said anything, you know, cartoon logic, but the moment that you realize that there could be a problem, that's when it hits you. But the, yeah, the battering ram used again, very clever. And, yeah, Lincoln tries to get Sky to use her powers since, you know, they're at this place where it's safe for her to do so and he uses his electrical powers and says sky's the limit pun not intended wow and see. yeah max seems to genuinely still care about fitz and the the hologram trick very, very clever. So, yeah, that's, you know, the, the, the case 
has the the you know some some gadget that allows the the hologram to pretend to yeah and and yeah you know if you see someone that you're supposed to take in you know playing a card game yeah you're going to be like okay let's let's get this over with go up to them you know try to try to get them out of there and that's going to you know that gets them into position so that Lance and Coulson can actually take them out with icers, which, yeah, when Lance was like, oh my, I, you can't be serious. How are we supposed to, you know, when we heard that, we were also like, oh my, this is ridiculous. But, yeah, 100%, Coulson, you know, he had thought it through. And Zabo and Gordon, Zabo's in a bad state, like, <clears throat> movie magic love, you know, he, it's, it's literally just, you know, they, they put fake blood on the actor, and we see him stand there, you know, pretending to hit it really hard, but the moment that we see it, we're like, oh, that's gonna hurt so much, that's, oh no, he's, you know, he's, he's punched this wood so hard that it's drawn blood, you know, and yeah, I 100% believe that's what Zabo would do if they locked him in a room and there was no way out. He would start pounding on walls like that, so, the, the door, I guess, but yeah. And <laughs> I forgive them for doing the, it's, it's appealing, you know, they actually play straight the, you know, there's one point where he's like, where are you? And Gordon's right, you know, tells, yeah, appears behind him. Just, yeah. I like Batman Begins too. It's, that's fair enough. And I do appreciate that the, the other shield did still manage to surround and capture Colson and, and Lance. And, you know, there's that moment where, yeah, we're not surrounded. And then the other ones land. See. Yeah, and uh, you know, there was like a second or two where I was like, "Wait, were they captured by the backup?" But no, it turns out backup did get there just in time, just before the Quinjet leaves with them as as captives. And I appreciate, you know, Coulson's right. the The look on Lance's face was absolutely priceless. And yeah, you know, it's very clever because last we saw you know, Mike said, you have, you know, you can use this to keep an eye on me, I'm just gonna be, you know, making amends. Yeah, you know, Sky gave that to Coulson in a matter of an emergency, this is an emergency, and yeah, Peterson was happy to help out, you know, last we saw him, that wasn't really a problem, it was just that it didn't seem like it was necessary for him to help out Coulson's team. And, yeah, so Sky, you know, confronts Lincoln. And I did note that he was very careful in how he chose his words. Because she asked, my father and Reyna, are they here? And he said, I promise no one, no one here will hurt you. Or just, you know, something very similar to that. Which, you know, I immediately, like, was like, okay, that's not a clear answer. That might mean they're not here and neither is anyone else that can hurt you. Or, as we see is the case, it means we're going to keep you separated until we feel confident that you're not going to hurt each other. You know, even if that means that you're never going to be in the same place at the same time. Let's see. But, but yeah, good scene between Sky and Reyna. And, yeah, Reyna continues to welcome death. Uh, you know, greeted as an old friend. And I really... Yeah, I thought her line was, was really great. The thing with... 
you know, let's see, does it, oh, okay, no one submitted to the episode quotes. Ah, uh, yes, so the, the, yeah, you know, she says, kids are afraid of monsters, they should know it's worse to be one. Which, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that the episode is breaking new ground. This is something that we already know, but it is meaningful that Reyna is saying this. You know, that's, that's where she is emotionally. And Jai Ying shows up and you know, tells Sky you were about to, to kill her, so, uh, you know, you're not so different, you and you. And, yeah, she she meets back up with Zabo and, you know, tells him, you know, and, and yeah, she's, she's really glad that Daisy's back, but Zabo is still you know, going too far. Let's see. I gotta admit, I like May, I did not think that he that, that Gonzalez actually handed her a loaded gun, but apparently, which, you know, sign of trust, sure, but they're really giving off cult vibes. You know, handing a loaded weapon to someone you've taken captive that's that goes beyond like I know you'll do the right thing that's like you know I am invincible kind of you know snakes can bite me and I will be fine you know just yeah which is also you know there's also a little bit of a cult vibe to the afterlife so very very culty episode which I do appreciate. I, I think it would be very boring if it really did feel like just, oh, wonderful place, you know, who wouldn't want to be there? You know, no, it is like, you know, the, the Lincoln could have told her, could have made it clear, yes, Reyna and your father are here. I don't think it's best for you to see them right now, but that's not what he said. You know, they are keeping things from her whilst saying that they they are trying you know we're trying to help it's it's those other people who think that you know others need protection from you we know that you're you know wonderful so yeah and <laughs> yeah colson says you know it might be time for one of the bad you know yeah, something that. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna try to get Grant to to help with the which yeah that you know like he said, who else is left? They don't have any other options left. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen next there because that really is a very yeah and. It is legitimately sweet that not only, you know, Gemma, so Gemma and, and Fitz, so was there like a message, I guess, in, because he was looking at Gemma doing research, I guess she was doing something that she knew he would recognize, and he does recognize, nobody else realized that, that she was sending him that message. And, yeah, you know, I do appreciate, because if you go back, I'm almost 100% certain the lines make sense for them, like, communicating. Because, basically, like, they, they say, uh, let's see, um, hmm, Okay, nobody added it to, to the memorable quote section. So I'm going off memory, so some of this might be off. But it's something like, you know, the, the he says, the secrets inside of this box are too important 
and she says something like the the you know we have to we have to know it's important that we have them so, something like that so yeah you know he's saying you know the, the thing of you know did you really want me to find out that way that's him saying i got your message i'm i'm listening what what is it that you th what do we do here you know and and she's like i'll make you know yeah i'll make another one that looks just like it so I can pretend research on one that's, that's useless, and you can leave with the, the actual one. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And she made the, the... And this time he gets to eat it, because Grant isn't around to throw it away, which, like, that still cracks me up, just thinking about, like, dude, what are you doing? You know? and, and, and Grant's like, there are... Dogs, you know, sniffing for us right now, and you bring like something that has a, a, you know, a very distinct, you know, recognizable aroma. You know, just yeah. That is, those those were my own notes. So to real quick go through and give you trivia for the episode. Right, in an earlier episode, um, let's see. Season 2, Episode 8. Cal told Whitehall he wanted to reunite with his family in the afterlife. This episode revealed he was talking about the, the sanctuary in China, not the life after death, literally. Very nicely done. Right. When Fitz is packing stuff, he takes down a selfie of himself and Simmons taken at the Incan archaeological site in... Peru in Season season one's 084. Right, and yes, the battering ram, yeah, the battering ram sequence showing the door integrity at the cabin plays out much like the sequence in Captain America 2 when Nick Fury is cornered by Hydra agents. The battering ram was used on his vehicle. And let's see. Colson mentions he had Deathlock keep tabs on Dr. List in the last six months. This places that assignment in between episodes three and four of the season. And huh, the license plate on the Jeep that Hunter and Colson stole was from South Carolina. This was a nod from writer producer Greg Tidley to the state, where his best friend works as a professor at Lander University. Tidley travels to South Carolina every year for the Lander University Film Festival, where he acts as a judge and guest speaker. Before the siege on the cabin, Coulson pulls up pulls a deck of cards from an old Howler's kit. There's a likely reference to Robert Rebel Ralston, one of Nick Fury's Howling Commandos in the comics, who never loses at poker. And yeah, Hunter mentions going down like Butch and Sundance. Sundance was played by Robert Redford, who played Alexander Pierce in Winter Soldier. And yeah, the I didn't need the the image, you know, Sky says any five year old can warm up a pool. Thanks. Thanks for that one. That was that was not was that necessary? And let's see. And I think that might be about what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I like when Colson says, I was thinking about what you said last night about bad decisions, and Hunter's like, I meant to have another drink, you know, not call the the enemy to, to our yeah. And and yeah, apparently Gonzalez wanted to recruit Fitzsimmons. Colson beat him to it. Bribed we were with cupcakes. And <laughs> Colson. 
Coulson says, you know, the reinforcements, I don't know, stuck in traffic. And Hunter asks, are they traveling by clown car? And let's see. I think that might. Right. And the, yeah, when, you know, when it sounds like Colson, you know, because he's like, I don't really know that much about flying, you know, and, you know, we're thinking like, why, then why is, you know, why is your plan to grab a Quinjet? But yeah, because Peterson can fly, you know, he thought that by the time they'd be leaving in the Quinjet, Peterson would have gotten there. And... And, and yeah, I, I quite like when, at the start of the episode, Honest Eddie, you know, approaches Coulson and says, Can I let you in on a little secret? I've got a genuine, honest Abe, God-given superpower. You want to know what it is? And Coulson just deadpans, I'm afraid to guess. <laughs> <laughs> 